So are you new to mixing and struggle to get your mixes sounding really clean? Well, I have a concept that might help you. And also, if you stick around to the end, I will give you a quick, super basic tip that will help you in the future. All right, let's go. We might get a little bit technical on this one, so try to keep up. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. So the concept that I'm talking about is the audio canvas. So I imagine this to being your canvas, like you have in Photoshop, you can't paint outside of your canvas, right? So there is only the sort of square box or whatever that you want to paint in. Same thing kind of goes for audio. So here I have a representation of the frequency spectrum. Uh, this is in the analyzer of the visual EQ that we have here on Soundtrap. So if I play a note here, you can see in the background, it is showing a note that is being played. And that is that specific frequency. So as you can see at the top, you have from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And that is your main canvas to think about. Also, from the bottom to the top, you have the decibel meter. So the markers on the right, going from 0 to 5 to 10, all that, they are showing the changes you are making to your signal. The thing in the back, the analyzer, is showing the actual volume of it. So at the top, at 15, you can imagine that to be your sort of max level point. So you can't play anything louder than that or else it's going to distort. And before you go all, but what about headroom and all that stuff and floating point, etc. I know. And I'm just trying to set this into simpler terms. So now if you consider this to be your canvas, you have from bottom in the base, like at 20 Hertz or yeah, this reaches down to hundred or all the way up to 20 Hertz, which cover your ears up there this one only goes up to 2k but that is your spectrum you can go in between these however much you'd like however if something is playing at the same time in the same frequency spectrum so let's say for example the more sensitive range for this is specifically in the bass so let's say for a kick and a bass two things playing at the same time you get that low rumble up in the top it's not going to sound as apparent and they're not going to be fighting as much. So that is kind of like how you can play like a lot of chords higher up on the keyboard. But when you start playing chords further down, it sounds a bit like a mess. Now, thinking about this specifically. So let's say you have a kick and a bass playing exactly at where that first bend is 50 hertz. They are both playing at the same time and they are exactly as loud. They are going to be struggling for focus there. So let's say that the kick is most active at 50 and then you have your bass that is also playing in that range. What you can do is just grab one of these and then pull that 50 down on the bass. This is the canvas kind of like mentality of you need to make space for the things that you want to be in focus. Same thing goes for vocals, for example. So let's say a lot of the vocal qualities like sort of presence and like the consonants, they are usually up in the range of like 4,000 to 6,000, let's say. Uh, if you have guitars or synths that are also playing in that range, it would be beneficial for you mix to carve out some space, especially if your vocals are sounding muffled or like kind of covered by all of it. Pull that down on all of the tracks that are kind of fighting for that space as well. So with the canvas, there is also one aspect of it that I haven't talked about yet, which is in audio, we have time as another axis. So the good thing with audio is that we have time on our side. You're not going to hear the kick on every single part of that song. It's going to be playing at certain times. So here, for example, it's playing here, here, and here. So when the kick is playing, you can play things in the same range of that kick in between those hits. So let's say a bass is playing at the same time. However, you can make sure that maybe the rhythm of the bass is playing in between those notes to make them not fight. That is also a way to sort of get around the problem. Leave space. Because you only have that canvas. You don't have much more space than that because anything that goes above that in volume is going to distort. So make sure to cut stuff out when you need to. The final tip that I will give you, this is a super apparent trick that you can use. So use it with caution. However, what I'm doing here is I'm automating the volume on the bass here to go down whenever the kick is playing. And then everywhere else, it's totally fine. So I'm going to just make a little curve, mark all of them, copy, and then I'm gonna paste it on each of these kick hits. So now what we have is this. If I'm comparing that with no volume automation, it sounds like this. 
So the kick doesn't really hit as hard as you want it to be there. So I'm going back. So now the kick gets enough space and then the bass comes in in between. So you're still getting that really thick, thumpy bass as well. The last and final tip, the good thing that we are listening to stereo signals, which means that you have one speaker for the left and one speaker for the right, is that you can actually widen your canvas using this technique. So what you can do here, for example, we have a bunch of horns playing exactly in the center all the time. So listen. Now it works, absolutely. However, if you would have a vocal there, for example, it would be a little bit more annoying to have it right there. So what you can do then is to simply just pan it to the right. And you do the same thing with all of them. So I'm taking this one and panning it to the left, doing the same thing, panning to the right, and then finally panning to the left on this one. So once that is done, we instead get this. And there are two benefits with this. You have a much wider stereo space, which gives you a lot more of an enveloping feeling and you are giving space to your vocals. So let's say we had a vocal. I'm just going to add a random one now. So let's say we have this one. And you got me. But all of them are playing at the same time. They're not fighting about space. You hear them all very clearly, but they're all around you. you got me. If you stuck around this long, I want to thank you for watching the video. And for that little quick tip, one thing that is super, super, super important that I feel not a lot of people talk about is making sure to set your listening volume. Now, what do I mean with that? Human hearing is pretty special because we're pretty bad at hearing lower frequencies at lower volumes. So let's say you're mixing but your volume dial is turned all the way down. So like you're just hearing a little bit, you are not going to be able to hear bass as well. So trying to set it to a consistent volume where you always mix is really, really, really good because then you know everything will sound the same coming out the other end. My best tip for this is making sure that use whatever streaming platform that you love, max out the volume on the player, and then set your volume to somewhere around 50 to 75% on your volume dial. That even goes for your computer volume, for example. And then listening to your favorite track on that streaming platform, you can fine tune it a little bit, but try to keep it into that range. Once you hear something that is like super comfortable for you, then you're good to go. So then you can start your mixing because you will be able to reference whatever you have on the streaming platform to what you're mixing. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.